Hi, my name is Cheryl O'Donnell. I'm with USDA APHIS PPQ in San Diego, California. I'm an area identifier there. My discipline is in entomology, and I'm a specialist in Thysanoptera systematics and taxonomy. All right, this morning we're going to look at larvae of thrips. Thrips larvae are sort of a gelatinous, long-bodied, plump-bodied organism with legs, very small head. Quite a lot of characters that we would look at in larvae we don't see in the adults. Uh, so there's a lot of different diagnostics that we will explain today. We're going to be looking at and referring to the key that was produced by Veerbergen, Kuchar Isaac, and Kirk. And that key is called the key to the second instar larvae of the Thripidae of the Western Palearctic region. So while this does not comprise all Thrips larvae, it does comprise a lot of specimens that you would run into in interceptions across the world, mostly in the Palearctic region. But it is helpful to understand the characters that are outlined in this, in this key. The first diagram we'll refer to is figure one on page 100, figure one and two, which outlines a, a one photo of an in, a larval insect on a leaf material in black and white, and the slide mounted specimen on the right hand side, figure two. You'll notice in figure uh, two that the head is very small and the body is relatively plump and rounded and much wider than the head. One of the characteristics that we need to see on the larvae is that they need to be at a certain larval stage. And there are two larval stages in the Thripidae, larval stage one and larval stage two. And generally, most of the characteristics that we need to see are shown in, in the larval stage two you would not necessarily see the exact development that you need to see in order to identify larval stage number one. So let's look at the diagnostic characteristics that we would need to see in order to identify Thrips larvae. So if you'll refer to page 101, figures three through six. Figure three shows the head of the larvae. And I'm going to show this on the slide as well so that I could point out the characteristics that we're looking at. Figure three shows the keto taxi that we need to see in order to determine Thrips larvae. I'll start with the head and looking at the DCD, the label D1. All right, so D1 is shown right here. This is a pair of CD at the back, sort of at the posterior edge of the head. We have D2 CD which are shown here laterally. And orientation, these are the antenna here and here, and the eyes. So we are looking at a lateral view, if you will. So D1, D2. And then we have D3, which is shown right here. It's just on the uh, anterior edge of the eye. And D4 is back here. So you have another set. This is a set. So D3 is on both sides of the head, and D4 is on both sides of the head. Now we'll go further down into the thorax. I've oriented the body so that the head is up at the top of the screen, uh, off the screen, but at the top of the screen. And the rest of the body is at the lower end. So we are now looking at the thorax CD. D1 is the lower posterior edge of the thorax here. D2 is the anterior CD on the thorax. D3 is a lateral, anterior lateral CD. D4 is a anterior mid-range CD. D5, D6 is out here on the lateral edge, and D7 is here. 
Now I outlined just on one side, but you have a matching set over on the far side. And let's get that in focus. There you go. So sometimes the specimens are not perfectly aligned and they'll roll to one side or another and you'll have to do some focusing your scope to see those, those other, other matching CD on the other side. All right, if you look at figure four, this is the ketotaxion abdominal tergite number two. Now these are also labeled D1, D2, and D3. Let me orient you. Uh, on many of the larval species, you'll have a spherical, which is shown right here on tergite two. There are many descriptions in your keys that you'll find that will say, if that is absent, that will lead you to a different species. So in some larval, species, there are, that spherical is missing on Tergite 2. So you have a set of CD in the middle. These are D1. This is D2 and D2 over here. And then D3 is on the lateral edge of the Tergite. And D3 on the left hand side is shown right there. Again, it's rolled over on the side a little bit. so. You can see that there's D3. As we move back up on the dorsal side, you have the spherical, and then you start to see D2 and D1. All right, let's move on to figure five. This is the ninth and tenth abdominal segment. Again, the CD are also labeled D1 and D2. And for orientation, you'll see on that figure, there's a character labeled C with a small letter S. That's your Campaniform sensilla. Let's just orient to that. This is your Campaniform sensilla on Tergite number nine. There's a matching, matching pair. So there's one on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. You also have another Campaniform sensilla on the Tergite number 10. And let me get it in focus here. You can see that right here, and the matching one should be right about here. It's kind of a dark impression. It's not really in focus. It might be on a fold or on a, a curve. So the D1 CD on Tergite 9 are shown here, and a pair of D2 CD here and here. On Tergite 10, D1 CD are shown here. and D2 CD are on the lateral edges right here and here. So now you're looking at the ventral side and all of the orientation on these particular figures are the dorsal laterals. All right, let's take a look at figure six, which is the antennal segments. And I will go to the antenna on this specimen. Now counting this, the number of segments is sometimes a little bit diff difficult on larvae, but let's see if we can outline all of them here. So in focus right now is the base. And you'll notice your figure starts at, at segment number three, but I'm going to count out for segments number one and number two. All right. Now we'll start with the segment number three. three. Segment four. Segment five. Six and seven. There we go. On segment six, you can see a sense cone. So if we count back, that's seven. This is six, and there's your sense cone right here. You can usually tell by the base. If it's a large base, your cetal bases are usually pretty small, but the, the, the sense cone CD are a little larger at the base. All right, let's move on to figures seven and eight. This is looking at it, sternite, abdominal sternite number nine, and it talks about the ventral side, therefore labeled 
V instead of D. So you have two larval forms in, this, uh, in these two figures, seven and eight. And this is determining larval stages of male and female in Thrips palmi. Now, I do not have a Thrips palmi in front of me, but I will at least point out the ventral figures here so that you can see them on the slide. Sometimes when you're getting your larvae in focus, it's best to start on the dorsal side first so you know where you are in focus, and then move to the ventral side. So dorsal side, I'm moving around to the sides laterally, and now to the ventral side. Okay? So in this particular case, we consider these V1 CD, V as in Victor, 1, V2, and V3. In the figures, you'll see that on Thrips palmi, the female larvae will have V1 and V3, whereas the male larvae will have V1, V2, and V3 here. All right, let's move forward to figures 9 through 28 on page 103. These are a display of the, num the types of spiracles that you can see on larvae. There are many facets. Sometimes those facets have uh, pores within them. There are three locations where you might have spiracles on thrips. One would be on the eighth abdominal segment, which is shown here. right here. Another one would be on the second abdominal segment shown here. And the third would be a, a set up on the thorax near the pronotum or the pronotal area which is shown here. The orientation and configuration of the spiracles are used in defining species in, in several of the larval stages. So those are the characters that will be um, looked at and defined within the key itself. All right, so let's move on to figures 29 through 41 on page 104. These figures are displaying the types of CD that you can find on thrips larvae. So I'm focusing in on the thorax or of the body. And we'll take a look at these CD. And the arrangement or orientation of the CD is extremely important, whether they have these are particular <coughs> types of CD that are found that are sort of flagellate, maybe with a, a thick base. So they're, they look like lances, if you will. They're pretty strong looking. Um, if you look at the body here on the tergites, they're a little bit thinner, not quite as strong as on the thorax, but they still are this lanceolate with a, a strong base. One of the characteristics is not shown in our figures is the actual sclerotization or configuration of the sclerites on the body itself. This particular specimen shows plaques and that will be referred to in the key. Description of a character on many larval species. So these plaques can be arranged in the number of rows. That might be something that they'll call out on the key. Defining species. Some of the plaques will have teeth on the, on the bottom that may be measured. Some of the plaques are smaller. There are some larvae who have no plaques. They just have a stippling of small points, and they can call it granulated. And then some have actual sclerotization, where there's darkened spots and reticulation within the body, some kind of sculpture. And that completes the orientation of larvae at this point in time.